Hello there and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos. It's great to be back. So today we're looking at, well we're looking at this camera over here, the Sony DCR DVD 110E. Um, and today I'm going to be taking a slightly different approach uh, to my videos than normal. It's not too different, um, but I have uh, some notes that I've made here because sometimes I feel like I want to give you a little bit more detail uh, and sometimes I might kind of stumble over things or forget things. So I'm just going to try this out and you can let me know what you think in the comments. So without further ado, let's crack on because I know you're excited for this content. <laughs> so um, yes, the Sony DCR DVD 110E. So this camera was launched to market in February 2008 with a host of other models uh, which were made up of the DCR DVD, are you ready? 115E, 310E, 410E, 610E, see the pattern, 710E and 810E. Um, and I'll talk about these other models in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, 2008 seemed to be an important year in regards to the makeup of these handy cams, uh, as it would appear that this was the first year when the hybrid recording option was offered to the consumer. Now, if anybody knows of other camcorders that offered this method earlier, please let me know. Um, 2008 was also the penultimate year for Sony's DVD uh, camcorder range, with a final product refresh coming in February 2009 with the models 150E, 450E, 650E and 850E. Um, now, when these final models were launched into market uh, in February 2009, it was exactly five years and a quarter, or five and a quarter years, it's probably a better way of putting it, um, since Sony uh, first launched their first uh, DVD camcorder, uh, which launched in December 2003. So that was longer than I realised, you know, five and a quarter years for various different DVD camcorders. Right, so let's get back to the Handycam in this review. So it's the Sony, as I said, the DVD 110E, and we'll have a little closer look at this camera shortly. Um, it's just there to look very nice for you in the, in the background. Um, so let's picture the time when this camcorder came to market. Do a bit of a Wayne's World, doodle -doo, doodle -doo. or you don't have to do that. Um, it's February 2008. So what was going on then? Uh, YouTube was exactly three years old. Facebook and Twitter had been in the public domain for around two years, um, and the iPhone had been on the market for less than a year. Strange to think that now. I think the iPhone had been on the market around about eight, nine months. Um, so times were changing, and the humble camcorder. Uh, would certainly have been trying to keep up with the times. So whilst uploading content was something which had started to become more commonplace, we can all remember doing it, videos, photos, but a lot you know, lower resolution, um, I don't think we could have imagined the explosion in content creation um, like we have today or like we, you know, we've got right now. Um, so whilst I can't know what, what was inside the magical brains uh, of those working at Sony, um, there started to be a lot of packing content in the, uh, included in the box of your camcorder, including the requisite leads for your computer, uh, CD software for kind of editing, um, so that the consumer could get their content off their camera to edit or share. So on that note, let me tell you a little bit more about this camera and the other models in the 2008 range, because I did promise you that, didn't I? So just before I begin, I just want to make it clear that there were a few models um, that I couldn't find information for. And I have a feeling that they might have been launched into a different market or region. Um, but all the relevant information that I want to tell you has been found. So don't worry. This is the place to come for nerdy information. So my camera, the DVD 110E, was the most basic model. Uh, you could record onto DVD or onto a Sony Memory Stick Pro Duo. So it is a mouthful, Sony Memory Stick Pro Duo. <laughs> now that was what made it a hybrid camera because you could record you know, via different methods. Uh, the video which it was able to record was captured either on DVD or the memory stick as MPEG-2, which was 720 by 576, which is the same as Mini-DV, Mini-DV. <laughs> um, 
Now, uh, if you were fortunate enough to have the 410 model or the 810 model, which I believe to be the same model launched into different regions, um, you had a third way to record video. Do you know what that is? Yes, that's correct. No, that's wrong. <laughs> um, you had a third way to record, and that was by way of internal memory, uh, eight gigabytes to be precise. Therefore, you could record in three ways, DVD or your mini DVD, your memory stick and internally, which I think for the time was really, really cool. And I had no idea that this was a thing, no idea at all. I still had my mini DV camera. <laughs> um, and just, just, to, just as a reminder that, you know, uh, memory co cards at that period of time, they were getting better at holding more capacity, but they still hadn't reached the area where we are now, the time we are now. So therefore, inter recording internally onto these small internal hard drives um, was still a better option. But obviously nowadays, we just get a really high capacity memory card and pop it in the camera for the majority of cameras. Um, so yeah, so also the 410 and the 810 model had an additional button which was just here. I will show you close up later on, but it was just here as you opened up the Flipper LCD screen. Um, and that additional button um, allowed you to dub your videos um, by tapping that button. Um, now, I don't have the ability to dub on my camera, but if you were to have the 610 or the 710, you could dub your work via options available on the touch screen. So it was still available to you, but you didn't have the fancy button. Um, I personally would have preferred the physical button, um, but there you are. Um, now, I wasn't able to find many sources on the price of this camera, and there's lack of reviews as well. Um, but I did find some stuff that was from the Australian market. But if you were the proud owner of the top model, the 810, you were looking at around 800 Australian dollars. Um, so there's just a few more things I'd just like to share with you before we have a look at the camera. So I haven't drilled down extensively um, on all the features of the camera, but I just wanted to note a few because I think you'd be interested. So firstly, the number of special effects appear to be lacking this time around uh, when compared, for example, to the DVD 92E, which I reviewed a little while ago, um, and which launched in 2005. For example, the digital effects is just old movie, that's it. Uh, picture effects is sepia, black and white and pastel. Um, don't like pastel. Uh, and then the faders was just a black or white fader, that's it. Um, and it seemed less than, than before, but um, to some degree, I never, really, I never really use a lot of the digital effects. So I probably, I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, the touch screen on this is better, it's is, is a much better touch screen. And what's interesting is that when you compare the touch screen on, the, on Sony's HVR Z5e, which I've also reviewed, um, I'm surprised that it didn't have a touch screen like this because they came out in similar kinds of times, but it seems like they were utilizing the older touch screens from the earlier um, technology that they had. So, the HVR Z5E's got a touchscreen like the older DVD cameras. Very strange. Anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> um, so you had three recording modes uh, on this camera. You had HQ mode, SP mode, and LP mode. And obviously HQ mode is the best quality. Um, I say obviously, but you wouldn't know that, but HQ mode is the best quality. SP mode is your middle quality and LP mode is the lower quality, but obviously you get more time on LP. Um, slightly lesser time on SP and even less time on HQ. <laughs> um, so what do you want? Better recording or more time? <laughs> um, you can choose between the screen ratios like you could on the older camcorders. Uh, so 16 by nine or four free. However, whilst the memory card output the 16 by nine without an issue, uh, DVD playback still comes out as four free uh, when I'm capturing the video. Now, I was able to make it 16 by nine via the software like I was last time, but I still don't understand why when I'm recording video, it's outputting it in 4.3. I have no idea. Um, and also lastly, the memory card was also able to correctly output the 720 by 576 uh, ratio um, in PAL, but when capturing the DVD video, it outputted it in 640 by 480 NTSC. And I've had this problem a few times before. Um, and I don't know why that is. But interestingly, the memory card seems to be doing everything brilliantly. So that is a plus. So one last thing I think you might be interested in, um, when I tried to take what I'd recorded 
off of the Memory Stick Pro Duo, uh, I ran into a little problem. Now, usually what I do is I plug my um, integral card reader into my iMac and I just pop whatever memory card into the relevant slot. And, and this one actually lists on the back what cards you can use and uh, it takes the Sony Memory Stick Pro Duo. Uh, but for some reason it wouldn't mount, it wouldn't work and the, the computer wouldn't recognize it. Um, which was annoying. So I checked, um, if you've got an iMac, I went to Disk Utility and I checked to see if it was kind of showing up, but no name, but nothing was there. So just before I was about to give up, I remembered that there was a USB cord um, in the box with the camera, in the box, not over there, it's there now, in the box. So I got that out, plugged it into the Sony camera, plugged it into my iMac, and there you go, it popped up and it recognized it. So a picture of the memory card on the screen. So that was pleasing. So once that was working, which it was, I was able to watch the videos back. I was able to make copies of the video, which was fantastic. But I ran into another problem when I tried to grab them into Final Cut Pro. And again, it was a very easy workaround. Effectively what was going on, because these were MPEG-2 videos, Final Cut Pro uh, won't recognize them. So all I had to do was convert them to an MP4. Um, and the converter which I used was one called Smart Converter. And you can download that um, off the um, App Store. I'll put a link in the description. It's very, very simple. It's very, very effective. So if you're having that same problem with you know, MPEG or MPEG2 videos, if you grab the Smart Converter, drag your files in there. And I had about 12 files and it took me about five or six minutes to convert them into mp4 format so generally um, no problems whatsoever okay okay so i think i've waffled on enough um just before we have a look at the camera i just wanted to state something about this camera with it being a hybrid camera now when i picked this camera up um i picked it up from a guy on for, from facebook marketplace and i got it for 20 pounds and I had absolutely no idea that this was a hybrid camera. I didn't even know that such a thing existed in that period of time. And when I've gone on YouTube to see if anybody else has made a video about the hybrid camera, um, there isn't anyone that's made one specifically about that function. And I think what excited me so much was that whenever you were using, for example, mini DV um, or any DV cassettes, you know, you would have to sit through the video in order to get it off. You had to you know, plug those cables in and just sit and rewatch your stuff. I never knew that you could pop a memory card into a camera and that period of time record onto it and just whack it onto your computer. So if you're somebody out there that really, really likes that mini DV format and you've been you know, working around you know, cables and you know, watching the video, I never knew that this was such a thing. And what a great thing. Of course, you know, I've done videos on, you know, the um, uh, HVR MRC1, which you can connect uh, to uh, certain camcorders that have got a digital out. But this has got no digital out. All this has got is your audio video out, which to me always kind of degrades the quality ever so slightly. But to have the ability to record directly to a memory card and get it straight into your workflow from a camera that is coming up to, you know, uh, 14 years old is fantastic. Some of the better Sony cameras that I've reviewed haven't had that functionality, but they've been better cameras. So if you're somebody out there that absolutely loves that look, look no further than a hybrid Sony camera. And I think any camera that you would have bought from 2008 and 2009 had that, had that functionality. So please, 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 Go and grab yourself one of these cameras. And I can certainly say that I'll be getting rid of my other DVD camcorders because this does everything that I need, need it to do with it. It's fantastic. So anyway, um, let's have a look at the camera. Once, you've had a look, once we've had a look at the camera, um, I've got some, uh, some video clips so you can have a look. Um, I mean, I certainly believe that the memory card is doing a better job than the DVD, absolutely, all day long. But you can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, after the video clips, there's just a little bit of fun with a zoom test, uh, digital zoom tests. Uh, and then there's some pictures at the very end, which I just took on the uh, memory card by just taking a photograph. So um, 
you let me know what you think of this review and you can also let me know what you think about the kind of um, history information about the camera. Do you like that style? Would you prefer me to go back to just pulling facts out of my head? Um, yeah, so uh, this is me and I'm signing off and I'll see you later. Okay, so as always, uh, just to show you what I got when I picked up this camera. So I got a really nice uh, little case with it. I'm actually not a big fan of camera cases, but on this occasion, I really do like it. Um, there was nothing additional. I had to buy the memory card for the camera, but it came, as I said, in a nice case. Um, obviously, you've got the camera, but we'll move that out of the way in a minute because we're going to come back to that shortly. Um, we've got uh, two uh, mini DVDs, which is always nice. Um, in here, I won't pull it out, but all this was, was it was just the, the power uh, block. So we can get rid of that. And also, if you can see this, uh, the gent had the box. So um, it's a really good condition box to be fair, considering its age. So 14 years old, just open the box up a moment and you can see here, just pull this out. This is what I got in the box. Oh, excuse me. Just throw the box over here. I believe there's nothing more in here. So let's just throw that here. So as you can see, yeah, nothing more in the box. So I've got the instructions, which is brilliant. Um, I got another like a piece of like advertising about the accessories, which is always nice to kind of see this kind of stuff. Reminds you of days gone by, what we could buy, all that kind of stuff. Um, got the AV cables, got the USB cable, and then as I was saying, and then we got two videos, uh, sorry, two videos, two uh, CDs. This one is uh, on the left here is Picture Motion Browser, a DVD camcorder. Uh, for the Handycam and this one is called Let's Enjoy Video. So basically, you know, wanting you to get the most out of the Handycam, providing you with the software to use it on your computer. It looks like these were for Windows. I can't see anything on here that was for Mac at that time, but um, the, the Mac was pretty good at kind of just pulling this stuff off. Okay, so let's just have a little closer look at this camera. So let's just turn it around and let's start at the front of the camera. So here we have an open and close sliding a switch here and that opens the lens cover here so that's it you can see the information on the lens there it's a little bit dark it's shaded but obviously on the front here it says Sony and then here you can't quite see it there's a little port you just pull that down here and that is where your uh, AV cable clips into there are no other ports um, anywhere else um, externally on the camcorder which is unusual so we're now going to move around so on the side of the camera just gives you all the usual bump about what the lens is the brand and most importantly hybrid watch out for that if you're going to buy one of these make sure it says hybrid and you can see here the sticker still on it and it says dvd plus memory stick hybrid movie recording i just can't believe i didn't know about this um, and you can see it's a wide lcd and you can see the model number there, DCR DVD 110. So let's just pop this open. I'll turn it on in a minute. Um, similar kind of layout as the later Sony cameras, um, where you've got like a home button, and you can also zoom in if you're using that as a screen and a recall button there. Now this is obviously new. Um, so here's where you slide the Memory Stick Pro Duo into. What you do is you clip that forward, and then you just slide it in. You can see mine sitting there. If you want to get it out, you just click it like that, and you just gently slide it out we'll leave it in there for now got a little speaker there down here you've just got a little button so you can see that that says display and battery info that's quite self-explanatory when the when the camera's off and you press that shows you the battery remaining and if the camera's on it'll take information on and off the screen <laughs> sorry about that my battery ran out i should have <laughs> been paying more attention right okay so we were down the bottom here so we've just talked about the display and the battery info so um, we have another little button here um, and that is when the camera's on if you press that it shows you what is on your memory stick uh, i can show you that very shortly um, over here you can see a little hole for your usb cable to be popped into and obviously um there isn't anything else uh, here to see uh, this gap if you see here this is where the dub button would be on the on the better models but obviously i haven't got one of the better models <laughs> okay so i'm going to shut that screen up a moment um 
on the top here we have quick on i didn't know what this was i'd seen it on other camcorders and i thought i need to find out what it is for this video so quick on is like a, a sleep mode so if your camera's on and you press that it kind of powers down the camera more efficiently than if you turn it off uh, by using the knob over here which i'll get to in a minute so i can show you that in a moment easy is just an easy operation um, i'm not going to go into the details of that but it is uh, all explained in the instruction booklet and it just allows operation of this camera for maybe somebody that's not necessarily used to using cameras it just puts it into easy mode um, and things are a lot easier and then here um over here right there is just a little picture of the sun that's like a backlight compensation mode straightforward so on the back here we have one of the batteries um this is an h series battery um and this is an mp fh40 and sony were crafty in this period because they started like changing like the battery carriages so for example i can't i can put this battery onto an older dvd camcorder but i can't put some of the old other batteries from the older camcorders onto here so yeah crafty um so with this camcorder which was pretty cool uh, which was an upgrade on the older dvd cameras it's got a color viewfinder and you pull this out and you obviously just look through it um you can amend it obviously like most viewfinders with the little thing on the side there but yeah nice little addition color color viewfinder so now we're on the back so they changed this there's a nice little switch uh, in compared to the older models um basically you turn it on like so and now you are in video mode and if you press it again you go into camera mode and when you are in camera mode there is a nice little button at the top here and if you hold it down slightly it auto focuses don't know if you'll hear it here we go then you hold it down again or you press it down and it takes a picture so just like standard cameras today and then you have your zoom lever on the top here hidden almost out of view uh, just here so it'll focus right here is your night shot button so you've got the return of night well i say the return but they were on and off but night shot plus on the top and then at the top here uh, we have the the open access to open up to get the disc out so i'll just quickly show you that it's no real exciting thing so there we go disc inside Thing to see here and then over here we've got the little area for your dc in so you can charge the camera up i think else available here moving around the camera so that's pretty much it in regards to uh what's on this camera sorry just move it out the way of the camera so you can't see it brilliant agent <laughs> um, that is it in regards to um the camera i will just show you the screen um if i press the quick on button like i said this should power down there we go so now you can see the light is blinking which means it's in standby mode and hopefully if we press it again it will come back on there you go then you've got easy so it says easy handy cam operation on and you can see actually if i just zoom in to this here that the font gets bigger as well I don't know if I press it again, it would come off. Yeah, easy, easy cam operation is off and you see the fonts have got smaller. So just make certain things easier using the camera. I'm just gonna go back um, into uh, camera mode. Um, and I'm just gonna press that little button just down here, which uh, I showed you just there, which is the memory card button. So if I press that memory card button, you'll see that it's showing me uh, what I've recorded the videos uh, onto the memory card so i can just press that to return to the previous screen and then if we press the display battery info button just there it will either display the pictures on oh, sorry the display on the screen or remove them so press it oh, i'm doing a terrible job of this apologies press it once so it goes off the screen and then to get it back on the screen um so yeah i don't think there was anything else that i wanted to show you in relation to that can't think of anything so i'm going to call it there you know what there was one more thing i was going to say um and that is that there is no port for a microphone which is disappointing um there is an option which has built-in zoom mic which i really don't understand um i haven't had a chance to dig deeper in that regard but there is no 
um, option for you to be able to plug in an external mic. So that's slightly disappointing. It'd be nice to be able to use uh, the wireless mics um, on it like I had been able to with like cameras that are 20, 30 years old, but I just didn't want to forget that important point. Okay, now I'm really signing off. Enjoy the rest of the content. See you later. There's the owner, minding his P's and Q's, look, there we are. So this is just a quick zoom test. I've put it on the maximum, 2,000 times zoom. Uh, I'm just gonna just test the zoom out. The steady shot is on as well. Still going in. It's still going in. It's still going in. It's unbelievable. I've lost the boat. <laughs> there is a ship on the horizon in front of me. You have to keep quite still, so this is going to be a challenge.
as you can see the digital zoom will go quite far but without a tripod it's very difficult to maintain it now I'll just change it into 80 times zoom and we're going to focus on the same white boat and I can see it starts to look kind of pixelate and get kind of that kind of digital look kind of got a little bit more to go but that is the top now that is the top end you can see I'm slightly in more control as to be expected so that's 80 times zoom and then here is your normal zoom that's the top end now Hello mate Oh, hello What are you doing? It's a friendly little fella Ain't got no food mate, sorry about that I'll leave you alone to eat your dinner It's a very friendly squirrel I'm only here, look Oh he's gone, oh he's over there Thank you.